Hi Math Wizards. Uh, today we are going to start learning about fractions. And we are going to start by reading a book. So this book is called Apple Fractions. Okay. This book is about apples and math. Apples are a fruit that we eat. They do not grow under rocks. They do not swim in the ocean. They are not made in a factory. Apples grow on trees. Thousands of different types of apples are grown around the world. Apples can be red, yellow, green, or some combination of these three colors. What is a fraction? A fraction is a part of a whole thing. A fraction is shown by placing one number over another number. A line separates the number. So that's a really important math wizards. Remember that a fraction is a part of a whole thing. <clears throat> Here is one Macintosh apple. This type of apple can be both a drink and a snack. A Macintosh is very juicy, but it is also crunchy and fun to eat. One whole. If you would like to share one apple with someone, what would you do? Two kids, one apple? A solution would be to divide the apple into two parts. A stem for one kid and the apple for the other kid. No, that's not fair. One half. How about a better way? Divide the apple into two equal parts. Here is one half of the apple. Okay, math wizards, listen to that again. Divide the apple into two equal parts. Equal is a really important word when we're talking about fractions. One half. <clears throat> Here is the other half of the apple. Two kids, one apple, two halves. Sharing apples and learning fractions is fun, right? Mmm, golden delicious. This apple is called a golden delicious. On the outside, it has a thin skin. On the inside, the fruit is soft. Three thirds. What if three friends want to eat this apple? Three friends, one apple, three equal parts. Here's one third of a golden delicious apple. Not all apples have white fruit. The inside of this apple is light yellow. Two thirds. Here is what is left over from one whole apple after taking away one third. Two thirds. One third plus two thirds equals three thirds. Three thirds is a whole apple. See, one third. There's the one third there. Plus two thirds equals three thirds, or the whole apple, one whole. Granny Smith. This is a Granny Smith apple. Is it ripe? Yes. A Granny Smith is green even when it is ripe and ready to be picked off the tree. This apple is sometimes hard to chew. It is not sweet. It's a little sour. One whole. What if four people in a family want to eat one Granny Smith apple? The apple would need to be divided into four pieces. One fourth. Each family member would get one fourth. The top number of a fraction is called the numerator. The numerator of this fraction is one. So there's the numerator, one. The bottom number of a fraction is called the denominator. The fraction three-fourths has a numerator of three and a denominator of four. Okay, math wizards, those are very important math words as well. Numerator is on the top. Denominator is on the bottom. Red delicious. Which apple tastes the best? 
everyone has a favorite. Many people think the Red Delicious Apple is the best looking and the best tasting. It is time to learn the parts of an apple. Stem, skin, pulp, core, and seeds. Most of the apples have 10 seeds. Orange. This is not an apple. It's an orange. It's another fruit that you can enjoy while learning fractions. There's no need to cut it. Under the peel, it grows in wedges. Oranges grow in warm climates, and apples grow in cold climates. Gala. A gala is a medium-sized apple. It's about the size of your fist. The largest apples are as big as grapefruit. The smallest are the size of cherries. This gala is cut into five equal pieces. Each piece is one-fifth. One-fifth plus four-fifths equals five-fifths. When the numbers above and below the line are the same, the fraction equals one whole. So I'm going to say that again, math wizards. When the numbers above and the numbers below the line are the same, the fraction equals one whole. So five-fifths equals one whole. You can see it here. Five-fifths equals one whole. Apple trees grow flowers in the spring. Bees fly from flower to flower and spread pollen on the apple blossoms. This is the start of an apple. Thank you, bees. Without bees, there would be no apples. One-sixth of the bees is busy working. Five-sixths of the bees are looking for another apple tree, or maybe even a pear tree, a plum tree, or a cherry tree. So fractions can be something called a set as well. So rather than cutting up a whole, you can have a number of things. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six bees. Okay, so there's a total of six bees. Five out of six bees are looking for a tree. And one of six bees is busy working. If you cut an apple sideways, you'll notice that the core is shaped like a star. Dividing the apple sideways isn't, or sorry, my mistake. Dividing the apple sideways instead of from top to bottom will not give you equal parts. The top, the middle, and the bottom of an apple are each a different width. So when we're talking about fractions, each piece needs to be equal. There are three basic types of apples. Eating apples, juice apples, and baking apples. No matter how you slice it, a Cortland is a wonderful apple to use when baking a pie. So this apple was cut into seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven equal pieces. Six sevenths are here. One seventh is being pushed by the tiny elves. Sometimes looks can fool you. This fruit looks like an apple. It's shaped like an apple, but it tastes like a pear. Why? It's a pear. Let's use this Asian pear to learn about improper fractions. If this pear is divided into eight equal pieces, each piece is one-eighth of the pear. A whole pear is eight-eighths. Imagine you have nine-eighths. Nine-eighths is an improper fraction. You would have to use two pairs to make nine-eighths. Nine-eighths is really one whole pair plus one-eighth of a second pair. So there's eight-eighths, which is a whole, plus one more eighth to make nine-eighths. So that's called an improper fraction. One-ninth. Cider. What is the difference between cider and apple juice? Cider is squeezed from fresh apples. The liquid is tan and full of pulp. Apple juice. Apple juice is cider that has been filtered. The tan pulp is removed and the apple juice is clear. Are you thirsty? Would you like one fourth, one half, three fourths, or one whole glass of apple juice? Have a look at this math wizards. 
Sometimes people get confused when looking at fractions because if you look at the denominator or the number on the bottom, one-fourth, the denominator, is a larger number. So you might think that one-fourth is actually bigger than either one-half, because there's a two on the bottom, or one whole, or one over one. But if you understand that fractions mean that the bottom number is how many parts, okay? So if there's four parts when you split it into fourths, that means that the parts are going to be smaller than if you were to just split it in half. See how there's more juice in half a glass of apple juice than there is in one fourth of a glass of apple juice. One tenth. Here are ten apples. Oh, well, there were ten apples. Here are nine apples. One has been eaten. One tenth is now a core. Nine tenths are whole apples. So this is a set of apples, okay? So that means that there are, there were ten apples. One tenth of the apples is a core. Nine tenths are still whole. The millions of tons of apples harvested every year are still picked by hand. Out of every 10 apples, six are eaten fresh. Two out of every 10 are squeezed into cider and apple juice. The remaining two out of every 10 are made into canned apples, pie filling, jams, jellies, dried apples, and apple butter. While you were reading this book, someone baked an apple pie. Let's eat a fraction of it. There we have one whole, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth. Notice as you cut the apple more, the pieces get smaller. So like I was saying, one half of an apple is a larger piece than one third. One third of an apple is a larger piece than one fourth. And you can keep going. So one might think, well, one eighth should be bigger because there's an eight on the bottom, but that's not the case. The bigger the number on the bottom of a fraction, the larger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. Hmm. All right, so that story taught us a lot about fractions and a lot about apples. Today, I would like us to focus on both. So we read in the story, what is a fraction? So it tells us that a fraction is a part of a whole thing. A fraction is shown by placing one number over another number. A line separates the numbers. So I made us an anchor chart that we can always come back to. So it says here fractions. A fraction is a number that expresses equal parts of a whole object or a set of objects, okay? So today I want you to pay attention to equal parts. It is not a fraction of a whole object if the parts are not equal, okay? We have here as well. So there is a picture of one half. So we know that the top number is the part and the bottom number is how many parts there are in the whole. Part over whole also means numerator and denominator, okay? So today what I would like you to do is go into your math book and do the first two pages. So this page here is just asking you to figure out if the parts that are being shown are equal. It's the same thing on the front and on the back. So those are the two pages I would like you to do. Also, I would like you to cut up an apple and then take a picture of it or a video and show me how many equal parts it has. So are you going to cut your apple in half and show two halves? Can you cut your apple into fourths? Can you cut your apple into eighths? Okay, 
So if you don't have an apple, you could try and use an orange, like it was in the story. Um, melon works, so you could use a watermelon or a cantaloupe. Um, just something that you know you can cut into equal parts and then make a video of that for me, okay? So that is your work for today and we will come back to fractions again tomorrow. Have fun!